Y'all, thank you for coming. This is Josie McDaniel Burkett, and as you have noticed, uh, she is signing. Can everybody, are y'all comfortable out there? I want to thank everyone for coming. As you know, there's a, there's a hurricane coming our way. It is a very unpredictable hurricane. It's coming in at a different angle from usual. It's not coming down from the south and coming up, but coming straight in. And that is because of atmospheric conditions that most of us don't think of uh, often, but is holding it in that pattern and not allowing it to go to the north, as most of them do. They turn and go up the coast. So we, we do not know uh, when it will change, if it will change, uh, but we are preparing uh, for the worst and, of course, hoping for the best. But being prepared, being prepared is always the best strategy. And we've been through hurricanes before, just recently. And I must say that our, our team in South Carolina, on the, the, the state and local levels, and everything in between, including our private partners like the Red Cross and Harvest Hope, everyone is on alert. And we have already begun moving assets into place. And uh, we, are, we are preparing. I'll call your attention to a very informative little booklet. It's the South Carolina Hurricane Guide. You can Google it. South Carolina Hurricane Guide. And there it is. And it is a great reminder and explainer of what you need to know when the hurricane's coming and when a hurricane is here. Now, we don't know if it is going to come to South Carolina. If it does, we don't know when, and if it does, we don't know how strong it'll be. But again, it is, it's a strong storm now. It's been strong, and it has the potential to get very strong. So with that, I have some people to explain, and we'll try to inform you and then answer questions if we can. At the end, John Quagliarello is the National Wealth Weather Service representative. John. Thank you, Governor. Uh, good afternoon. I'm John Quayero with the National Weather Service. So right now, Tropical Storm Florence is uh, located out in the central Atlantic with wind speeds of 65 miles per hour. It will continue on a westerly track and I expect it to strengthen back to a hurricane tonight. Uh, after that point, rapid intensification is forecast and is expected to become a major hurricane, which is a Category 3 or greater, uh, as it turns to the northwest early next week. Florence is forecast to be a dangerous major hurricane near the southeast coast by late next week. The risk of direct impacts to South Carolina continues to increase. However, given the uncertainty in track and intensity forecasts at this time range, as we're still talking you know, four, five, six days out, it's too soon to determine the exact timing, location, and magnitude of any impacts to the state. Again, depending on the track of Florence, conditions could begin to deteriorate beginning at this point, it seems like some point late Wednesday or Wednesday night. Um, also be aware that high surf, rip currents, and coastal flooding could all occur into next week, even if Florence does not directly impact the state of South Carolina. Uh, so now is the time to prepare. I would also recommend visiting weather.gov safety for hurricane safety tips and other resources. Thank you. Thank you. Also, I mentioned earlier about the our preparation, in preparation, at noon today, I issued a, uh, an executive order pursuant to law that declared a state of emergency in South Carolina. This is not an evacuation. This is not an order to do anything other than to declare that a state of emergency does exist because of the potential of this hurricane coming here. And what this does is allow our agencies to begin mobilizing their assets to get them down to the coast to get ready if and when the hurricane arrives. And the one who has the details on that is the director of the Office of uh, Management, and uh, that is Kim Stinson. Emergency Management Division. Kim? Thank you, sir. As the governor said, Kim Stinson from the State Emergency Management Division. And I think most of you know that. Uh, EMD, State Emergency Management Division, is responsible for coordinating the state response during emergency situations, and unfortunately, we've had a lot of experience with that in the last four years. 
Uh, but our primary mission is to support local authorities uh, and make sure that they have the necessary assets and logistics to, uh, to get them through whatever event we might have. And right now, our current priority is planning. Uh, we're taking a look at, uh, you know, the potential of the hurricane coming here and seeing what we might have to do. We've got an experienced emergency management team here in South Carolina. We've got good plans, and we've validated those plans here recently, not just during Hurricane Irma last year, but also Hurricane Matthew last year, where we actually had a coastal evacuation. Uh, and we're also responsible for coordinating the out-of-state resources, and we're taking a look at what we might need should a potential hurricane hit here in South Carolina. Uh, I'd also like to note right now that there's the potential for this to be a full state event and not just a coastal county event. So I think that needs to be uh, part of the, the planning process. It could very easily be a, uh, a full state event. And I know the, uh, the governor already mentioned about personal preparedness but, uh, and, and, you know, the, uh, the hurricane guide and how important that is, is that we ask everybody in South Carolina, all the citizens, to be their own personal emergency manager. Uh, you've got to be the help until help arrives if something happens. And it's not just for a hurricane situation, but also for any event that we might have uh, here, whether it's uh, floods, tornadoes, or, or whatever. Uh, we've got some tools that will help people plan. The governor's al already mentioned the South Carolina Hurricane Guide. Uh, we've also got our website, scemd.org, which is full of information on how to prepare for an event. And not just, again, hurricanes, but all kinds of events that where you might have a have a situation that uh, you're presented with emergency uh, problems. We've also got a, recently we fielded a new, uh, I guess, uh, tool for your toolkit, and that's the South Carolina Emergency Manager application, which can be downloaded on your cell phone. And uh, we've had about 20,000 downloads uh, so far, and we'd like to get a whole lot more, but everything that's pretty much on the website is also on that Emergency Manager app. It's also got uh, information in there to have you set up your own emergency plan, your key phone numbers, your key contacts. Uh, it'll have up-to-date information on Know Your Zone. Uh, if you're in an evacuation zone, you can type in your, your address and it'll tell you which zone that you're in so that when an evacuation, if an evacuation is announced, then you'll know when you're supposed to go. So we encourage everybody to, to use that. Uh, that tool and uh, and help them get prepared and thank you sir thank you are there any questions yes sir what was his name your name <clears throat> my name yes yes Kim Stenson Kim Stenson K-I-M-S-T-E-N-S-O-N -E emergency management division director O-N S-T-E-N S-O-N I think I got it right yeah. <laughs> I think that's it Governor Ritfa. yes sir Category 4 does make its way here. Are you confident that we will be in good hands to have all the supplies we need to take care of it? If yes. so, then why? Yes, because we are prepared to the nth degree. This uh, declaration, emergency declaration that I issued has allowed, made the technical uh, legal uh, authorization for things to begin getting done with machines and people moving to the coast. Uh, we're in constant communication with a wide variety of uh, organizations that will be called into play, including the Red Cross and Harvest Hope that I mentioned, as well as many others. We've been in communication through the Department of Health and Environmental Control with uh, the nursing homes and uh, hospitals, so in constant communication. Because as you know, if, if and when a hurricane is coming, there, there are extra steps that must be taken uh, by those uh, institutions and organizations. And there's a lot of planning. We, we're planning uh, across the board with constant communication. You may have noticed we had a, a meeting earlier today. We had everyone involved, as we usually, as we always do uh, in the room there, uh, to discuss all aspects to be sure that we are prepared. So the, the government organizations, state and local, are prepared, are preparing now uh, for, for the worst, hoping for the best. What we cannot force anyone to do is we cannot force the citizens to also prepare. So that's why we are urging the citizens to prepare. Now is a good time, uh, as uh, Kim Stenson mentioned, to, to 
determine what papers you may need if you must leave your home on short and not be able to go back for a number of days, possibly. And we'll know more tomorrow. We'll know more the day after tomorrow. But <clears throat> based on what we know now, it is the situation is such that it is time to begin preparations uh, in case the hurricane does come. And that would be medicines, if you need prescriptions filled, do it. If you want to alert people or your whereabouts, do it. All your animals, uh, possessions that are irreplaceable, just be thinking about what to do. And we will be in communication uh, from, from this location uh, readily to provide the, the, the best updates that we can. And some confusion here for the folks watching. State of emergency, but no mandatory evacuation. No, yet. no mandatory, way too early for, to make decisions like that. What we are saying is that we know that a hurricane is coming in our direction. We know that it is a strong one. Uh, we know the, the, we do not know what the chances are that it will hit us, or if so, what kind of blow or, or where and we don't know precisely when, but we know that it's coming and we know that we need to take precautions. Even if we just have strong winds and a lot of rain, that can cause dislocations. We need to be ready for that. So what we're urging people to do is to prepare yourself for a hurricane. Very simple. Would voluntary evacuations be premature at this point, do you think? Uh, that would we're not calling for evacuations at this point. This well, is this is set. Well, anybody can leave whenever they want to. It's uh, we're not calling for anyone to leave at this time. Is there like a drop dead time where you feel like you have to make a call on that for evacuations? All, that that will, we'll do it at the appropriate time, depending on what happens to the hurricane. You see, this is this is a uh, it's an interesting experience in the weather. Uh, and climate and, and uh, geography and all that to, to try to calculate based on past records. We've looked at records of past hurricanes, where they began, where they ended up, what their strengths were, and you can see those lines as you see them on television. They're all over the map. <clears throat> but trying to predict one is very, very difficult. But I assure you that we have the, 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 the capability of watching and determining, along with the National uh, Weather Service and, uh, and other outlets, to determine as best we can to give the right kind of warnings and the right kind of information. And why come out so early is just a better safe than sorry information? Better safe than sorry. Always. I mean, it's a beautiful day outside. People playing football today. And probably the last thing on anybody's mind is a hurricane. But if you, you look at that weather map on television and you can see there's a big one, could be very big, that right now is headed in our direction. So we're urging people to get ready, get ready. Just yeah, like they're... just like they got ready to play these football games today, there's a lot of readiness that went into that. We want to, want all of our people to get ready just in case it does come. Governor, the uh, governor of North Carolina issued one yesterday. Yes, sir. Is there any reason it wasn't done yesterday? Uh, can you comment? It wasn't time that? yesterday. Are you not concerned that for some parts of the state, local governments and relief efforts have already been strained in the past couple of years by the other major events that we've had? Uh, just the opposite. I would say that in the last few years we have had experience with hur hurricanes, recent experience, and we the, the people in those positions uh, today are many of the same ones who were there last year, the year before that, and the year before that with floods and hurricanes. So we, we are highly experienced in, in many capacities. I think we are, we are as experienced and prepared as government organizations and auxiliary organizations can be. Uh, what we are urging is that the citizens prepare themselves as well as I have mentioned. Was that North Carolina declaration something that spurred you today? No, we, we were, there, there may be other declarations by other states. Everyone it gets the information, from, some from, a lot from the same places, and they make the decisions based on all the factors known to them. The, the uh, geography is uh, different in some places. The coastline is different. Uh, the, there are many, many differences. But I, I assure you that the, the, the team in this state is doing it exactly right. Any more questions? Game predictions. <laughs> we will have a great day.
<laughs> we will win. <laughs> We're going to win. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you.